Melissa sings it slower than I do. But hey, she sings she sings it she sings it four four. I sing it about four four with a quick tempo. And uh but, but it's I like that song. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. How are we excited about hearing about the fruits of the spirit tonight? <laughs> Amen. Wendy, stand up. Wendy representing. She brought her fruit of the spirit shirt today. Yeah. So she representing. Yeah. Give Billy a hand yeah. as he comes on up here. Come on. Amen. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Amen. His mercy to us. Thank the Lord that he has provided. So just a little, a few little things you may have noticed. I tried to blend in. I did not make it. So I was actually had to work today. I tried to go to work, but today I had to work. And so here I am. So I'm, I'm here. Uh, I tell you that to tell you even even in your time, you know, that you, uh, that you have, that you're going through the day, uh, we want you, you know, we just want you to be in the house of the Lord. So even if you're like, I come from where I, I'm dirty, I'm, I'm sweaty, it's all right. So were the disciples at times because they didn't take as many showers then. So you're all good to be here. Uh, thank you for being here. We're going to talk about fruits of the Spirit tonight. We talked about works of the flesh last week, so if you were here last week, you got that. And there's some definitions. I told you to write them down, and some of you probably did, and some of you probably didn't. Say, I know them all. Okay, good. That's good because I don't know them all, and so I just want to help you out. Don't fret if you uh, don't have all of those. I will have a piece of paper for you, and that will have all those on there, okay? All right. That don't mean you shouldn't take notes. It just means that we'll provide that for you as well. All right, let's get right in it to it. Turn with me to the book of Galatians. What chapter are we in tonight? That's right, not four. Last week was four, but this night, Galatians chapter five, we're going to be in the scripture, Galatians chapter five, starting with verse 16. And uh, 16 was our works of the flesh, so we're going to just recap very quickly, uh, and then we'll get into the fruits of the Spirit. So works of the flesh. We had adultery, so it starts in 16. The New Living says this, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves, okay? So if you live by the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And we know that uh, some of the works of the flesh we talked about. But verse 17, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions, okay? So we understand that, the flesh and the spirit, warring against each other, right? We know this. We talked about it. We're all there. That being said, let's talk about a few works of the flesh. When you are directed by the spirit, you're not under the obligation of the law. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. We talked about these. So if we want to go through the slides, adultery, there's 17 of them. <clears throat> adultery, fornication, uncleanness, um, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. I will have to say when I talked about uh, wrath last time, I was like, oh, how many? And I didn't do other things. I laughed about that. It was just you had to be here. And then Brother Blake talked about uh, we had an idea of heresy in the church. Y'all remember what heresy was, right? So if you did not, heresies is this, uh, opinion or doctrine at variance with the orthodox or accepted doctrine, especially of a church or religious system. So, you know, uh, opinion or doctrine at variance or indifference with, say, what the church believes. And so... <laughs> After the service, y'all know a uh, pastor was up here, and he said, hey, we have men's, men's breakfast, and, and, and women, you can, you can show up if you want. I gave him a hard time about it because I said, no, they couldn't. And Blake came to me after the service. Pastor is preaching heresy up there trying to tell women they can come to a men's event. I thought, man, that guy's listening. I love it. I just thought, that's so funny. Pastor didn't laugh at us like we did. We had a good time. Anyway. All right, so wrath, seditions, heresies, uh, envying, 
murders, drunkenness, and reveling. So that's all of that, right? Uh, so I know y'all's back and forth. We'll go, forget the scripture and go straight to the slideshow. Let's go on that and we'll go to the fruits of the spirit. Uh, I'm, I, uh, I know they are doing great and I'm jumping all over the place and I'm sorry, but the scriptures, we'll get to that, but we'll go through. So those were the works of the flesh, okay? Works of the flesh are, if you'll notice, there's 17 in there. How many fruits of the spirit do we have? Nine. We have every bit of seven, but I'm going to add two more tonight, uh, so I'm just kidding. We have nine, right? Seventeen works of the flesh and nine fruits of the spirit is the scripture goes. And the reason why I think that's important to you tonight is to tell you how powerful the flesh can be if you don't bring it into subjection. And if you will just just subscribe to a few things within the spirit and that God is trying to get you if you will if you will strengthen your spirit self you can hold the flesh in subjection to that but we have it vice versa because so many times we allow the flesh to war and win okay it's easy to watch tv it's easier to watch tv than read the bible right it's easy to have a conversation than it is to go hide away and pray. Listen, I, I, I'll tell you what. I saw a message on prayer. I'm telling you, it changed my life. I'm 53 years old, and it's changed my life. I'm telling you, I can't give it to you yet because I've watched the thing five times. I'm getting notes. I'm just telling you, it's eye-opening. The point of all that is the, the idea of prayer and having a relationship with the Lord and, and knowing what God can do in our lives, and we sell ourselves short because God is an all-powerful God, and we're like, eh. I think pastor preached one time where he said uh, the, the church, somebody had mentioned that the church should be for false advertisement because we preach a gospel of power, but we don't manifest that. <laughs> That's hard. I'm going to keep it straight tonight and just be real soft. I'm marshmallow guy tonight and just... Oh, I love you. We're all good. It's 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 gonna be good, but we had to spice it up, little cayenne, uh, little cayenne uh, marshmallow. Uh, so that being said, we've got to talk about the the fruits of the spirit. Okay, nine of them. Now, if you can name all nine, great, you're doing good. And if you can't, don't worry because eighty five percent of the people here can't. So even if you raise your hand. I'll put you on the spot, right? I'm just kidding. You don't have to. I was kidding. But when we talk about this, if we go to verse number, not, not on the screen, but we'll, yeah, verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, okay? So King James, verse 22, says, but the fruit of the Spirit is, and New Living says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. So it's not that you can just, have it, you know, you have to produce, you have to work on it, okay? So these are things that you've got to work on. Some of these you will be okay with, and others you will say, ah, I got to work on that, right? We're all good with that. If you have all nine, great. You have a little smidgen here and there, but some you have to work on more than the other. First one is love. Oh, it's the last day of January coming into the month of February, the month of love. We've got to love one another, right? I will tell you um, my favorite scripture. One of my favorite scriptures is this, uh, love me some me. Oh, y'all don't know that scripture? In the Bible, it says that you should love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. You can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. I love me some me. Therefore, I can love the neighbor, right? Um, Y'all working now. All right, let's talk about love. What is love? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. What is love? Anyway. All right, love. Love is a strong feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection, right? I mean, joy is good too, but if we can stop at love, I'm kidding, Teresa. She's clicking through. Yeah, let's skip right to joy. Who needs love? What's love got to do, got to do with it? Uh, 
All right. No, I'm just kidding. That's It's got a lot to do. Yeah, go to Scripture. It's fine. I'm just giving you a hard time. I really am. It's fun. All right, love, a strong feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection. We love everything now. Drives me bananas. Oh, I love that Kleenex. It's soft to my nose. Really? That's where you're going to put love? Oh, I just... I just love the fact that fall is in the air. Fall? Oh, I love spring. I just love it. Do you love spring? I mean, how much do you love spring? You haven't been in Alaska in spring. It's breakup. It's horrible. I mean, what do you love? What do you really love? I love I love God. I love Melissa. I love my, my kids, and I tolerate the rest of y'all. Is it okay if I'm just transparent? right? Point of that is, let's talk about what love is. Now, God and I, we disagree a little bit on the idea of love because God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, right? I I mean, I don't love y'all enough to trade any one of y'all for my kids, that's being all serious. If if it came and and Mike Jones, which all right, but if Mike Jones was here and Isaac, my son, was here, and they said, "Hey, we got to take one of them. One of them will die tonight." Mike Jones, right? I mean, you get what I'm saying, okay? Uh, and that's no disregard to Mike Jones. I mean. Pastor and I have been best friends for 40 years. Now, um, you know, Kinsley, it's a toss-up. I'm just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. But if Pastor was here and Kinsley was here, and they're like, hey, somebody's got to go, and I said, he had a good life. I mean, that's the whole point. It'd be the same with your kids. I, I mean, because I don't want to give up my kid. For, for your kid. I'm just using that as an example. But yet God did that for us. Can you imagine that type of love? So when I talk about a strong feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection, I'm not just saying, oh, I love, I love that color on you. <sighs> Let's calm down, right? Same thing on the flip side with hate. We talked about hatred, and you can't hate everything. I hate spinach. Do you? You just don't like the taste. Oh, I hate it. Like, I don't like asparagus. I just as soon not eat asparagus. I don't know why people eat asparagus. That's my own personal opinion. But do I hate it? Uh, no, hate's such a strong word. There's not a whole lot of things that I hate, hate. Like, I, I mean, I, I hate the devil, right? But other than that, uh, it's just I don't I have a dislike towards something. But hate, same pendulum swing on love. You can't just say you love everything because now you diminish the actual feeling of that. Let's talk about a strong feeling, a deep affection. That's what love is. Love is so strong that God loved us so much. He said, my son, yeah, I love him, but I love you for him to be that sacrifice. That that is amazing, okay? Uh, Number two, first one is love. What's the first one? Okay. Uh, You know, according to Dora the Explorer, If you say it three times, it gets into your memory, right? Over the hill, across the bridge, into the woods. Over the hill, across the bridge, into the woods, right? That's where we go. (laughs) Backpack, backpack. All right. Uh, Number two, joy. Let's talk about joy. What is joy here? Jesus, others, and you. Uh, That's an old uh, women's, right, PLA thing. (laughs) Joy. All right, joy is the emotion of great delight or happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying, okay? We're, we need more love. I know they're having troubles. Uh, they Last week, they, they, they did a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know why I created problems for them, but I did. I'm sorry. Um, so joy, the emotion. So joy is an emotion, okay? The emotion of great delight, that's pretty cool, or happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying. What gives you joy? 
What happens to you when you when you get joy? Oh, I get joy when I see, you know, just kids playing in the field. That brings me joy. Again, does it? Kids playing in the field? I mean, that. I guess it's all right. I've never really thought that I've had a great delight seeing kids play in the field, even my own kids. I'm like, hey, don't bring them stickers in the house. I mean, you know, don't step in manure or something. I mean, uh, great delight or happiness caused by, oh, I just have joy every time I get that first uh, smell of coffee in the morning. That brings me so much joy. And that could, that happiness caused by something exceptionally good or satisfying. I give you more credit than that, right? But maybe that brings you joy. What brings you joy? There's not a, a reason to have joy as, a, um, as a, a factor of saying, well, there's degrees of joy. You can have great joy or you can just have a little joy. Just be happy in what you're doing, right? So in this, a great emotion of great delight. What delights you? The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So if you find great delight or happiness in joyfulness in the Lord, guess what? That's just a relationship that keeps you going on. So what gives you joy? Maybe you think, well, what gives me joy is, is uh, when my coworkers don't, you know, they do their job and I don't have to do it. Now you're just making an excuse. That's not really joy. That's just a uh, stress reliever, right? Not really joy. Have a great emotion about it. Let's put joy, a fruit of the Spirit. When you, when I think about fruit of the Spirit, people talk about don't judge because Matthew 7, 1, you know, we always talk about you can't judge me. I sure can. But number one, number two, uh, we're fruit inspectors, right? So that that fruit, do you have love? No. Then you need to get love. Do you have joy? No. Then you need joy. I can look at your life and say you're not a joyful person. You, you might need a little bit of help. Well, what kind of help? You need some joy. You need something that will give you great delight. What gives you great delight? You've got to find that. But that's a fruit that can be, uh, what? Okay. That's not where I was going, but all right. So what gives you great delight? What gives you a happiness caused by something exceptionally good, right? So then you figure out that fruit. If you get a fruit and you're like, hey, I like Granny Smith apples, and I, boy, I'd like them right after. We had a cherry tree at, at the house out here. Um, it was really good. Man, cherry, fresh cherry, just right off the tree. You just go and you just pick them, you eat them. Loved them. Boy, I loved them. And then they came through, and somebody bulldozed the tree right down. Didn't even need to. Just, it was dumb is what it was. I just, I'm praying about that. I'm going to ask for forgiveness one day, but I ain't there yet because I don't have no cherry tree anymore. But, boy, I love cherry. I know. I know. I threw my phone, too. But back in when they did it, we didn't have phones. It was way before cellular. Um, it, was, it was, I just love picking that. I love mulberries. You climb up in a tree and you pick a mulberry. You get one and you, and you eat it. You had to, had, to, had to blow the dirt and the bugs off. Other than that, that's how you cleaned them. So when I taught my kids how to eat mulberries, I was like, oh, grab this. And they're like. Okay, and we just always did it. I don't know why. It was just, I mean, I know why, but the point is, is that's how we were taught, so we, we just kept handing that down. If you're in a, a tropical place and you get a, you know, some type of fruit, you can pick it right off the tree. You're like, oh, that's good fruit. But sometimes fruit have worms in them. So if you have a worm in your joy, you're not joyful, right? In fact, you go from joyful to hateful. That's a strong dislike. Not a great delight, a dislike. So quit being hateful. And if you're hateful, get some joy. Oh, I'm hateful. I'll be hateful I want. You can be, but you're not facilitating the fruits of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Number three. What's number one? What's number two? Yeah. Number three, peace. A state of mutual harmony between people or groups or security. A state of mutual harmony between people or groups or security. All right? Security. Uh, a state of mutual harmony. That just reminds me of the old Coke commercial, right? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. 
Anyway, it just makes me think we're just living in harmony. Ah, oh, we, we're kumbaya. I mean, think about peace. If you have peace within your life, here's, here's my day today. I have a, a day that I, I thought was going to go well. It started off, uh, and it went bad, okay? It started, and it went bad. That's how I went, okay? So I'm, I'm here, I'm there, I drive to Ada, I have, then there's problems. I, go, I have to drive to Oklahoma City, so I go just a quick trip. Listen, I, it's Friday, I drove to Memphis and back just because, you know, nothing else to do, might as well drive. I'm just kidding, there's other things to do, but 891 miles later, we're at home. I just, uh, we went to Memphis, ate lunch for two hours, and come back. Why? Because we're crazy. That's what's happened. We had to get some, but the point of that is, is uh, I, I was driving today, so today was not a long driving, but I had to get something, and I'm driving, and I'm just thinking, oh, this is going bad. Work's not going well. The workers aren't going well. Nothing's going well. The, the well that I have is dried up. Nothing is working well. And I'll be doggone, I'm driving to the city, and I'm, I'm getting, you know, closer. In fact, where I-40 splits into three lanes there, you know, that area there. And I look, and there's a, a, a lights, and I'm looking, and it was a fire truck, and there was a car there that was burnt. And I was driving, I said, Lord, my day's going fine. Let's face it, I'm complaining because I'm driving in a vehicle that I'm not paying for, or the gas, or the wear and tear, and it's a comfortable vehicle. I'm just having to go somewhere and get something. It's, it'll help our job, all that. And I'm complaining, and here's this couple looking at their charred car and everything. I'm like, well, oh, thank you, Lord. It really made me think that maybe I should enjoy the peace that I have. And then I realized I'm married, and it all went down. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That ain't right, Cassie. That ain't right. I mean, I never got an amen like that from Mike before, but oh yeah, he. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I am blessed, too blessed to be stressed. All right, so that's peace. So peace is what I don't have at the house sometimes because of statements like that. However, a state of mutual harmony. Melissa and I, I have a harmonic relationship. Anyway. All right. Number four. What's number one? What's number two? Uh, what's number three? All right. Number four. Long suffering. Long suffering. Uh, all right. Long. What is this? We're talking about this. All right. Long suffering. Enduring injury. Trouble or provocation long and patiently. <laughs> How many of you have had some injury? Uh, right, Wendy? All right. Well, Lord must know you need long suffering. There you go. Uh, you should quit, quit praying for that. Uh, How many of you have endured trouble, trouble once in a while, right? Maybe a provocation from a family member. We've had, ever had any problems with a family member? I might be that family member. So if you're here, I'm part of my family, that's on you. Uh, I just try to be me. Anyway, enduring that. What is long-suffering? That means you're going to endure. It doesn't mean that you're going to be free of trouble. It means that you're going to have to go through it. Fruit of the Spirit tells you that if you're long-suffering, you'll go through it and you'll be okay. Yeah, it happens. Listen, the fact that you think no, nothing happened, well, it always what gets me is I get this from people, and if you're this people, I get it from you. Uh, well, everything always happens to me. You're not that special that everything happens to you. Everything doesn't happen to you. Some things happen to you, and some things happen to me. I don't want to compare each other, but I'm telling you, some things will happen to you, and some, some good and some bad. It is what it is. Well, you just don't know what my life is. And you're right, I may not know. There is some good, there's some bad. I guarantee if we had a testimony service, I wouldn't know some of the things that you have went through and endured. I wouldn't know that. And I'd think to myself, oh, my goodness, I didn't realize that. And then I could tell you things that I went through, and you're like, no, never. You never did that. I'm like, 
I did. I, I endured, right? I'm okay. The point of that is long-suffering. If you endure that long and patiently, there is an end. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not always that train, right? There's a light that you're going to see. You're going to get there, and you're going to be tired out, and you're like, I can't make it anymore. And one more step, and you realize you have more energy, or you get to the end of that. Long-suffering is just that. You may have to suffer. It is okay. Did Jesus suffer? I don't imagine the crucifixion was a, a walk in the park. Okay? I don't imagine dying on the cross was, hey, a joyful moment, but yet he suffered even in his walk, people coming against him. All he wanted to do was good, right? But you know what? The thing about Jesus is he didn't care about the ministry. He cared about helping people. He didn't look to have a name for himself. <laughs> listen, listen. If I was the one standing beside Jesus, the disciples asked him, I think in Luke chapter, I think Luke chapter 1, it, may, it won't have to ever go there, but you can maybe, I'll, I'll verify. Um, <coughs> the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And I thought to myself, man, I'd ask the disciples, I'd ask Jesus, like, hey, teach me how to open blind eyes, because I'm about to start a ministry up in here, right? Blind eye opener Billy right here. All right, teach Teach me how to walk on the water. That'd be awesome. I'd call the news and say, hey, y'all go out to you follow. I'm about to walk from here to there. Watch this. I mean, that'd be awesome. But no, they said, teach us how to pray. And Jesus spent his time in prayer three, four hours in the morning, and then he had a moment with people and said, hey, blind man, what do you need? He said, I need to be, I need to be healed. I'm blind. He said, oh, be healed. Bam. Fraction of the moment. But yet he spent three, four hours every morning in prayer. Why? Because he always got up early. He was always alone praying. Je read your Bible. It's in your Bible. Jesus often. In fact, the most crucial time that he needed, he didn't call a prayer meeting. He said this. What did he say? He's like, tarry ye here while I go and pray. Right? Stay here. I'm going to go pray. That's awesome. He was praying in his own. Anyway, that's on prayer. I'm not getting into that. I'm just letting you know long-suffering. If you think that you're going through things and you don't know if you're going to make it out, you better start praying more. Well, you don't understand. I pray. I, I prayed 14 minutes today. Well, your problems lasted four hours. So works of the flesh, spirit. We pray for, you know, our snooze prayer I mentioned to you, nine minutes. We pray nine minutes. But yet we deal with problems all day and wondering why we're not getting anywhere. I'm not telling you have to spend all day in prayer, but you should pray without ceasing, the Bible says. Mm, I ain't even get on prayer. I just, I've been, pastor knows, I've been, we've been talking. All right, long suffering. All right, number one. If you're online, you should be repeating two. Number one, number two, number three, number four. All right, we're getting there. We're almost halfway there. Number five is gentleness. Gentleness. The quality of being gentle or kind or amiable. Okay? Gentleness. Now, obviously, I'm going off of King James, which I, I was reading a message. So I, I read through the Bible, and uh, I... Um, I've got different versions, so I've read through. Uh, I I've read through the King James and NLT and the uh, ESV. So now I'm through the Message Bible, which is interesting. The Message Bible is really just tells it as a story, you know, because I know what the Scripture says, so it just kind of reads. It's pretty cool. Uh, but some of the ones, their translations will be a little different, so I get that. But I was reading through the Message Bible on this particular one. And if you will just permit me for a second here, some of the things it talks about here, it, on, the, on the works of the flesh, it talks about this repetitive, so we talked about adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, all right? So that's kind of the order. This uh, message says, repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking acclamation of mental and emotional garbage, frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, 
all-consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, an impotence to love or be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. I could go on. This isn't the first time I have warned you. You know if you use your freedom this way, you will not inherit God's kingdom. So that's how that did. Then it says, but what happens when we live God's way? He brings gift into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, love, right? Exuberance about life. Serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, long suffering, a sense of compassion in the heart, gentleness, kindness, amiable, right? A compassion, a sense of compassion in the heart. What is gentleness? The quality of being gentle or kind. You can be gentle even in a situation that doesn't really call for gentleness and yet calm the waters. Gentleness to me just calms everything. Everybody can just be all frenzied. And when you're gentle, you're like, oh, okay. Listen, know that I'm like a duck on water. You see up top, I'm just I'm just going along. But underneath, man, them feet are kicking and flapping, and I'm all frenzied. But you just, ooh, I'm just smooth. I'm going. But why? Because I try to be gentle. But I've told you there's some things that come out and those feet start flapping. When you tell me something's not hot, and it is hot, them feet get a flapping, right? Melissa told me the other day, she said, I, I told you it wasn't hot, but I meant to me. Because she heard that, and I was like, it'll be fine. I'm just saying, just don't tell me it's not hot when I say, well, it's hot. No, it's not. I, I get on, Sister Naomi told me that the other day. She said, no, it's not. Well, it is to me. I got taste buds, and they're not burnt. Anyway, I'm just saying gentleness, right? We've got to be more gentle with each other. Why would we not be? Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be better just to be gentle with somebody? That doesn't mean that, you know, that you don't have to stick up for what's right. Well, you just preached about striking the arrows. Now you're talking about gentleness. Yeah, you strike the arrows at the devil. You are gentle with the fellow humans. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, y'all got to start a riot up in here, but we, we too much with quiet riot. God, I don't know. Y'all don't know them songs. Uh, we just sometimes we got to understand that we, we've got to let our emotions show the right way. The fruits of the Spirit have to manifest when we're dealing with people. So you've got to be gentle one with another. Be gentle. Be kind. We do 92 seconds of kindness, which is a Silly, silly thing. We started, and I really didn't think it was going over. We started 90 seconds, but uh, Alec put up, and he hit the wrong thing, and it went to a minute 32, and it stuck. So that's why we do 30. That's why we do 92 seconds, if you want to know why. Because I said, oh, we don't know what 90 is, and it went the other way, and it was just funny. So now we do 92 seconds of niceness, right? Why do we do that? just to get you interacting and let somebody know if somebody comes in and you're like, hey, you look good today. Oh, well, thanks. When you tell somebody they look good, people appreciate it. Let, <laughs> my man, Mike, if I can use you again, if I told Mike, like, hey, I like your shirt. Looking good, buddy. If I said, wow, that well, shirt is ugly as your face. That wouldn't be good. That would not be gentle. Right? That would not. Now, you tell me, which one would he prefer? He'd rather, if I didn't like his shirt or his face, he'd rather me just not say anything rather than to call him on it because it's my opinion. I mean, Cassie thinks he's a specimen of a man, and I'm like, really? I, that's what I'm saying, right? And he'd think the same way about me right? I, we, we kid each other. But there's a way to be gentle with somebody. You got to know when and know when not to. All right, number one. Number two. Number three. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Number three. Y'all wait for the preacher. Number four. 
Number five. That's right. All right, let's go to number six. Number six is this, goodness, all right? Goodness, we're almost there. That's the wrong goodness. This is goodness. A conviction that is, uh, that is basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way into life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. So we're talking about goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. So we're going to talk about that. Goodness, the state or quality of being good or moral excellence. I find our problem is we don't strive for excellence. We are okay with being okay. We've been told, hey, it's okay being okay. Really? I Listen, what do we sing about God? Well, he's an okay God. He's okay. God is okay all the time, and all the time he's okay. We don't strive for excellence. We don't, we don't make ourselves better. But with goodness, the state or quality of being good or moral excellence. When you come into church, especially, you don't have all your stuff together, right? I don't have all my stuff together. I don't know everything. I don't do everything. But when I come to church and I serve a God that is holy, and that he wants me to be holy, I should stop doing the things I was doing before that would not get me close to a relationship with him, and I should start doing what his word tells me, and then I should strive to do that. Well, you just don't know, you know. We sin, we sin. It's a sin. It's what it is. It's in the Bible. That wasn't what was meant to be. Let me help you all out. I'm about to blow your mind because I'm about to blow your mind. Quit sinning. For goodness sake, quit sinning. Stop. Well, you don't know how hard it is. Yeah, I do. I was doing it. Then I stopped. Quit it. Well, it's an addiction. Well, pray. You don't understand. It's a disease. I'm telling you, you cannot convince me that God can't, the awesome, mighty God that created the universe, that created our bodies, for crying out loud, he created platelets within our bloodstream to stop uh, uh, blood from flowing out to coagulate so we wouldn't bleed out into a scab. That's how you get a scab. That's microplatelets coming together. He did all that, but he can't stop you from stealing or lying or some addiction. You're telling me he can't do that? I find that hard to believe. You're not serving the same God I'm serving. I didn't. That was a preaching moment. Pardon me for that. I'm teaching. Goodness, moral excellence. Try to be better, not better than somebody else. I'm not trying to be better than Becky. I'm trying to be better than I was yesterday because yesterday I might have been a little irritable and not having much joy. Today I wanted to have more joy. Yesterday maybe I didn't have peace. Today I had a little bit of peace seeing that God's protected me. My car wasn't sitting on the side of the road burnt. I have a little peace about that. Let's let's strive for excellence. Oh, yeah, calm down. I'm not. Fitbit's telling me calm down. You should exercise. You should lay down. All right. Number one, love. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. These are good things, aren't they? Would you rather have those six or adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, uh, idolatry, or witchcraft? Which one? That's my point. Number seven, faith. Talk about this. You know what you got to have? Faith, the faith, the faith. You got to have faith, the faith. Anyway, baby. Confidence. Or trust in a person or thing. Belief that it is not based on truth. Ooh, got to have faith, right? Confidence or trust in a person or thing. Believe that is, belief that is not based on proof. Can't prove to you that literally if you want to say, hey, will you prove that God exists? And I love when people say, oh, you know, you can't see the wind, but you can feel it and you know it and all this stuff. And I get all that, but I'm, you want to know if God exists? Ask him. Do you exist? You know what? Show me. 
pastor pre, uh, prayed this. If you're the guy who I've been preached to all my life, you got to show up and do something because I'm in a spot. And now he's our pastor. Pa- God will show up. I mean, he'll show up. So you have to have faith, confidence or trust in a person or thing, right? So you have that. You have faith, confidence or trust in a person or thing. Belief that is not necessarily based on proof. I can't, I can't, I can't um, analytically convince you that God is uh, alive and well and doing all these things. Uh, people believe in the Big Bang Theory, right? Listen, let's say that, let's just say, let's say it did, right? Let's say that the Big Bang Theory is right. Two, two objects was hurtling through for millions of years. They banged together, and here we have the Earth. All right? I'll buy it. Sure, why not? I'm a scientist. I love it. Where'd the two things come from? Well, they were just there. They always existed. They were there before the annals of time. So was my God. Woo! I'm just telling you. You want to you wanna get me well, we have this, we have that. I, I can analyze with you, and you might even have a better theory, but if it goes against what the Bible says and what I believe in what God has for me, I'm going to believe the Word of God. Why? Because God has done things in my life that probably science can't explain. Here's one for you. I've had three collapsed lungs. I've had three chest tubes, uh, all in this lung. I've had have scars here, here, and there. And uh, <clears throat> they're not fun, okay? But one time I had it, and I knew what was happening. First time I had it, I thought I was having a heart attack because I couldn't breathe. The more you breathe in, like you're... <sighs> And your lung expands, and when you breathe out, it goes down, then fluid fills, so then you can't expand as much more. So you go, and every time you breathe in, and then pretty soon you're just, now you can't breathe, and you got one, now you can't breathe, so you're anxious, now you're freaking out. I thought I was having a heart attack, I was in ninth grade, and I thought I was dying. Everybody else thought I was dying. I get in an ambulance, and uh, they hook me up, and we hit a bump, and my uh, thing came loose, my mom's in the front, and they go, beep, beep, and it fell out, and it's like, beep. And that's not funny, but it kind of was funny. It was not fun. She did not think it was funny, but it was, no, that was not funny, Chrissy. But that was hilarious. She's like, oh, anyway, I did not know that until later. That was just fun. That was mean. That was mean, but I didn't do it. I just happened to be there. Anyway, that was bad. But I got this uh, chat. So I knew what was happening this next time. I was at work. And I, uh, I stretched and I yawned at the same time. And what I had on my lung, I had, uh, I had uh, basically blips, which, which are blisters around the uh, cavity of my lung, the lining of my lung. And so certain things would cause them to pop if I got hit or I stretched a certain way. So I was at work and I, I stretched and I, was, I felt this like kind of loud pop in my mind. And it's like, oh, and I was like, and I was like, oh, this, first of all, it hurts. Then you can't breathe. And then you freak out. And I was like, oh. So I go home. I drive myself home from work. I'm in college. I drive myself home from work. And I'm laying in bed. And I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm just, I'm dying. I said, Lord, I'm by myself. My parents, at this time, they were on a vacation in Florida. Uh, so did not take me and left me with the collapsed lung. Now, technically, when they left, I didn't have it, but that's the story I tell. They left me with the collapsed lung. So I'm in bed, and nobody's at my apartment. I've got three other roommates. They're all gone, and I'm dying, and I say, Lord, I can't. You're going to have to take the pain away. I cannot take the pain, Lord. I believe in your healing. Please take the pain away. I just believe you can do it. And I say, oh, there we go. There we go. I had no pain. Here's the problem. My lung was collapsed, so I couldn't hardly breathe, but I had no pain. If you've ever had a collapsed lung, that doesn't happen. And so much so that my buddy comes home and said, why are you home? And I was like, I think my lung collapsed. He's like, what? And I got up, and I was like, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> Actually, I said, <sighs> I'm hungry. And he's like, what are you breathing hard? I said, I, I don't know. I, well, I'm pretty sure my lung collapsed. He's like, well, let's go to the lake. And I was like, sure. It was Saturday, so we go to the lake. 
And then we hit, we were on a boat, and we're hitting. I was like, that, <laughs> I said, it's rough out here, and I can't breathe. Then Mike Campbell, uh, he, he's a crazy guy. Um, we're on this boat, and I'm like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. So I get home, and I said, hey, I can't. I'm going to have to see a doctor. So I come to see Dr. O'Keefe, who was here at the time, and I walk in, and I was like, oh, I can't breathe more. He's like, oh, it's nothing, because I walked right in. And he, in, he x-rays my lung. My lung's 100% collapsed. And he says, oh, my, you're going to Baptist Hospital for emergency chest tube and all this. How did you make it in here? I said, I just walked in, you know. I couldn't hardly breathe, but I had no pain. I drive myself to the city because my sister and my grandma drove with me, and they pulled over at Midwest City because both of them said, we ain't driving in the city. So I drive in. <clears throat> I drive to the, from Midwest City to Baptist. We're going, and then they said, well, you got to go over here. We walk underneath Baptist the whole way. I'm like, <sighs> at this point, I don't care what they give me because I don't really feel pain. I just can't breathe. I go in. The uh, thoracic surgeon says, oh, my goodness, we put a chest tube. They put a chest tube right in put me out, and then three days later, I get out of the hospital. Point of all that is I had no pain. Literally, I prayed, and you talk about faith. So as much as you want to tell me that God doesn't exist, uh, I've seen too much for you to convince me now. Well, why didn't he heal you? Well, because dummy head didn't pray for healing. I prayed for the pain to go away. And I don't know, the Lord and I will have this conversation, but he knew what I meant. <laughs> Yet he did what I asked. So when you ask, you ask a miss. True scripture. I believe it now, so I'm very specific now. Lord, Lord, I need this. So much so that I just prayed for a miracle. I said, Lord, I, I told him the amount I needed. I was like, I need this amount. I don't need more than that. Would we like to have a million dollars? Sure. I didn't need a million dollars. Would I use it? Yeah. But I had a bill that I'd have due, and it's this amount. Lord, I believe that you can help me with this. Anyway, that's the point. You got to be specific on your prayers. I think sometimes the Lord will answer your prayer just to say, I did, and, and I was wrong. All right, so that's faith. Confidence, right? Confidence or trust in something, all right? So we've got one through seven. Number one, number two, number three, four, number five, number six, number seven. Now, eight and nine will end here. Number eight, meekness, the quality of being patient or quiet in nature. Ah. Uh. Some of y'all ain't quiet in church, much less nature. Pastor says, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. I think I'm going to start attending a Presbyterian church. Sometimes I need quiet just because I, so I lose focus. That's why, because I'm like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. It's like even talking when, y'all notice, I'm a little different than Pastor. When I'm talking, if y'all say, like, like even uh, Laurie, Laurie said something, I was like, wait, what? So I'd like lose my whole thing and say, what? What'd you say? Chickens. Why? I don't understand why you said chickens. Now I'm thinking about chickens. Thinking about chicken nuggets. I like fried chicken. I mean, it just goes like a squirrel. Anyway, I just told Pastor this other day. I was in the office. I was doing some study. He walked in. He's like, hey. Uh, so I start putting my stuff up. He's like, what are you doing? Am I interrupting you? Yeah, man, you came in. You turned the TV on. I'm trying to concentrate. He's like, oh, I can't read a book in the airport. I can't because I start reading it. I'm like, oh, what did they say? Who is that? I don't know them. Oh, that's interesting. Look, they fell. They got too much luggage. That will not fit in overhead. I cannot read it. Melissa, I start reading a book. If I go to bed early and she comes to bed and she wants to turn the TV on, I guess I'm done with my read. She's like, what? What? You know I can't read if there's other things distracting me. I can't do it. I, it's me. I get it. But I can't, I can't hardly do it. I don't understand why. I need help with that. That should be a fruit of the Spirit about not being distractedness. Anyway, uh, but meekness, the quality of being patient or quiet in nature. Don't, don't um, mistake my meekness for weakness. You can be quiet in nature. Oh, they're quiet. Oh, 
be impatient in nature. Oh, see two parents, one's meek and one's certainly not. Uh, the Jordans apparently know this because they're shaking their heads. Mackenzie's shaking her head. She's like, ah, preach, preacher. I thought Mackenzie's going to run the aisles all of a sudden. I preach something to minister to her. All right. Uh, the qu- quality of being patient or quiet. Sometimes we've got to be quiet in our nature for the Lord to speak to us. Amen? So sometimes you need that meekness. And then number nine, temperance. And then we'll go over all these as I let you go. Uh, temperance, moderation or self-restraint in action or statement, self-control or abstinence. Okay, here's the thing. We always think about temperance in the form of, say, alcohol. Okay, that's what I have always thought in myself when people preach that, oh, like, you know, moderation, self-restraint. But that could be in anything. Moderation or self-restraint and you just acting out. Quit acting out. Quit acting a fool, right? Uh, Self-control. Control yourself. So do we need help with temperance? Yes. That would go on wrath. Some are wrathful where you need help with temperance. You need to temper yourself. Quit going to the extreme of things. If you want to eat a Twinkie, eat a Twinkie. Don't eat the whole box. There's 12 in a box. I don't understand why you can't eat 12. If they don't want me to eat 12, don't put 12 in a box. Put one in a box. That's how I feel. I'm a Twinkie guy. My kids will make fun of me. They bought me a box of Twinkies, and I ate them, and somehow (coughs) they were all gone. In one day, I don't understand how that how they did that. And they said, we didn't have any. And that was amazing. That helped me right there. I need some, I need some self-control. So I abstained from Twinkies until the next time they buy them. <laughs> Quit sinning. Quit buying me Twinkies. And if you buy them, I'm going to eat them. They're there. I think the Lord blessed me with them. All right. But that's what we get, moderation, self-restraint, right? So there's some moderation stuff that you've got to work on. You've got to work on some stuff. That's like saying, hey, you talk to me. I'm going to, tomorrow, I'm going to pray for six hours straight. No, you won't. First of all, you won't do it. You just lied. You're not going to pray for six hours straight. But you can start moderation even on that to build that to strive to excellence. Same way with that. You may not quit everything, but start quitting some stuff. Quit sinning. So you're like, well, you don't understand my life. I got seven sins. Okay, well, knock off four of them right now, and next Sunday, knock off the other three. You have to. Let's work on that, some self-control, some self-restraint, right? So let's go through the fruits because I ran out of time. Number one, love. I love it. Number two. Number three, oh, that's good. Number four, number five, yep. Yeah. Uh, number six, goodness. Number seven, number eight, yeah, meekness, gentleness, yeah. Temperance, number nine, yes. Temperance, self-control, self-restraint, abstinence, all right? So that's the fruit of the Spirit, all right? Fruits of the Spirit. We got works of the flesh, fruits of the spirit. I know I kept y'all uh, five minutes longer than y'all planned on being here. I will blame that pastor took up prayer time. I told him, don't be taking up my time in prayer. And here he is trying to pray for people. Uh, I'm glad he prayed for people. Uh, but you know what? The next time he asked me to preach, when he said prayer request, just say, yeah, real quick, one, and just go your way. Then I won't keep you late. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. We love praying. So, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 25. I'm going to ask Blake to come here, if he will, real quick. I asked Blake, not Sabrina, because it was between me and Blake what we were doing, and we knew some things. So I have all those uh, definitions. So he'll be at the back with you. I should have gave that to you early, and I brought up that. Uh, He'll be at the back. If you want one of those, it just lists the 17 works of the flesh and the nine fruits of the Spirit. And it gives you the definitions that we went over here. It's real simple, just to give you something. But uh, fruits of the Spirit, that should be something that you should have and know. That's right. I'll tell you what. Uh, That should be something that you should know and you should try to memorize, okay? There are nine of them. Nine fruits of the Spirit. You You can memorize those and get those in you, right? We should talk about their, you know, if I can trust you with nine fruits of the Spirit, 
one day we're going to talk about and learn about the Ten Commandments. We have to up your game because there's ten of those. Hey, this is a this is a spoiler alert. There's ten in the Ten Commandments. Yeah, just let you know. Ah, it's mind blowing. All right, all right. Fruits of the spirit. Don't fulfill the works of the flesh, but grow fruits of the spirit. Amen. Stand with me today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you for being in service with us. Appreciate you being here, coming out on a Wednesday night and serving the Lord. Uh, as pastor says, you bunch of radicals coming on Wednesday night, serving the Lord. Appreciate you coming. Lord loves you. And let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time and this opportunity to come before you. Lord, I give you glory and honor for all that you have done in our lives. God, I pray that you will allow us to, to meditate upon your words that we re read in the book of Galatians, God, that we will, we will not fulfill the lust, of the, spirit, uh, the lust of the flesh and the works of the flesh, but that we will uh, have our spirit rise up and those fruits will become evident in our lives. Father, let us be the image of you and the likeness of you and portray your goodness to others. In your glorious name we pray, amen. Amen. If you need any prayer, you let us know. We'll pray for you.